one more time from the legendary Sir Rod Stewart. He is one of the most successful recording artists of all time with more than 250 million albums sold. And now he's back with his 31st studio album. It's entitled The Tears of Hercules. And Rod Stewart joins us from London this morning. Rod, good morning. So good to see you. Hi, Matt, Caroline. How are you doing? <laughs> we're good. We're uh, well. I just mentioned a second ago, this is your 31st album. And you say uh, one of your best albums, Rod. What uh, makes this album stand out for you? Oh, I say that with every album. <laughs> it is, uh, I've worked on it a lot. You know, it's, uh, lockdown really didn't have much to do with it because most of it was all finished by March last year and waiting to have it released. But um, it, uh, it was a transatlantic album because I was locked down for 18 months, so I couldn't go back to America to record. So it was all done, you know, through laptops. Truly tr a transatlantic album. Now, listen, uh, Rod, it goes without saying that us here in Canada, your Canadian fans, we have had a love affair with you forever, it seems. And just wondering, uh, do you have any particular memories of touring uh, here in Canada over the years? Oh, I couldn't repeat them on daytime television, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure. They're one, of the, they're one of the best audiences up there. I really enjoy myself. I love Toronto. I love Winnipeg. I don't know why Winnipeg. I think it's because I stay in a hotel where the Queen once was. There's a hotel there where she stayed, and I think, oh, Her Majesty stayed here. Rod, was it the same room? Yeah, it's the same room. <laughs> And she, well, actually, I'll tell you a story. She was she was actually going to stay in the hotel a few days after I left. And she was stays at the same hotel. And I unfolded the toilet paper, hoping that they wouldn't change it. And I said, Your Majesty, you can't sit here all day. There are speeches to be given. And rolled it back up, hoping she'd see it. Whether she did or not, I don't know. <laughs> well, next time we interview her, we'll ask. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Last month was the 50th anniversary of your hit, Maggie May, going to number one. Hard to believe you almost left that off the album. Yeah, well, it, um, it didn't have a catchy middle eight like pop songs were supposed to in those days. It just, it's just a long old story. And it wasn't even finished. You know, they, they, the record company said, look, we've only got eight tracks. Can you give us another one? I said, I've got this one without a title. And I called it Maggie May, finished it off. Um, even if it wasn't for a DJ in Cleveland who turned it over, because reason to believe was the A-side, turned it over and played Maggie May, I wouldn't be talking to you today. Mm -hmm. Incredible, incredible. I love hearing those uh, stories because you just never know. We say this so many times. What is going to be a hit? You just mm -hmm. can't uh, predict. So, And as big as your hits have been, uh, Rod, of course, uh, maybe your hair has been equally so. And we have to uh, talk about <laughs> Rod Stewart's signature uh, hairstyle. Tell us about that. Where did it come from? How did you come upon this in the early days? Um, during the mid early 60s, they had a hairstyle in France. The guys in Paris had what they called a bouffant, you know, and uh, all the guys in England copied it. And we used to like back comb it and put loads of sugar and warm water in it to make it stay aloof, you know, aloft rather. <laughs> so uh, it came from there. So it's actually, was, it was born in Paris. <laughs> sugar and water. I would imagine yeah. bees, bumblebees. <laughs> <laughs> Following Rod Stewart everywhere. <laughs> well, it was, we, you know, lacquer was very, very expensive. In fact, I'd never heard of lacquer in the early 60s. So <laughs> we hear these days you're coaching your son's football team. What is it like coaching your son? Oh, it's wonderful. It's, uh, you know, because I've, I've played all my life and I miss it immensely. So, uh, you know, I live vicariously through my, my son now and his football team and coaching them. They're the young Celtics, uh, Celtic rather, not the Celtics. But the Celtic is the team I support. So um, Celtic FC, the football club, have been very kind to send us down all the uniforms and everything. So it makes me very proud. Well, coming up, of course, are the holidays. We hear that uh, you and another sir, Sir Elton John, once had quite the memorable holiday gift exchange. Oh, yes, that's very, very true. Yeah, I, I went out to buy 
Elton a Christmas present. I went to Harrods and spent six hundred pounds on a fridge that you press a button and the fridge came out with all the glasses and ice and lights and a bottle of champagne. Press the button and it goes down again. Which was six hundred pounds in those days was, was a considerable amount of money. Mm. You know, you talk about the early seventies because we used to live close to each other. So on Christmas Day, we decided to exchange presents. So I gave him mine, which was this little portable fridge, and he gave me a Rembrandt. <laughs> Rembrandt, which I've still got, which is worth an absolute fortune. He's the, he's the most generous guy on this earth. <laughs> I can only imagine your reaction when you uh, open that. As oh, you mentioned, so you still crestfallen. Yeah. <laughs> Does he still have this fridge? Does Elton still use the fridge? <laughs> no, but I've still got the Rembrandt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> all right. Well, here is a great gift idea for us all. Rod's new album, The Tears of Hercules. It is available. It is out right now. The great Sir Rod Stewart. Sir Rod, great to see you this morning. Thanks for spending Thanks, a few minutes Rod. with us Thank here on The Morning so Show. Much. Have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs>